Let's take a quick look at an example of what Epical's BPM can offer. The BPM is based on events, conditions and then actions. So a BPM monitors the system for events. If those events meet certain conditions, then an action is triggered. If we take a look at an example of a sales order. Here I have a pre-populated sales order that I'm placing for a customer. And behind the scenes of this is a BPM set to monitor the discount field. So if I try to enter a discount of 5%, the system allows me to do so. However, if I try to give this customer a discount of 15%, the BPM warns me that this is a high discount by turning the field yellow. Now, if I enter a discount of 30%, you can see how the BPM pops up a message box to alert me that this is a very high discount. If I go ahead and OK this, and then save the sales order, the BPM can then pop up a data request form asking for further information. Once I enter the reason, I'm notified that my order has now gone for approval. So you can see how BPM has managed the workflow based on the predefined rules for different scenarios based on the discount percentage. So now my order has been put on hold and I can't carry out any more processing on it until it has been approved by my manager. The next action that this BPM will take is to email my manager to notify them that an order with a high discount has been placed and that they will need to review it. In this example, the notification email shows the approver the basic details of the order and gives them a few options to be able to review, approve or reject the large discount. My manager may be out of the office and receives this email on their smartphone or tablet. In this case, they would be able to click on the link within the email and review the order using their Epical Web Access login. The order can then be simply taken off of hold. Alternatively, they may decide to approve the order without reviewing it. And in this case, they can just reply to the notification email and type the word approved. Epicor can monitor the email inbox, which that reply goes into. And then based on the keywords within the body of the email, it can act accordingly. So now, if we go back to the sales order and refresh the screen, you can see how the order has now been taken off of hold. And we can now carry on with its processing and it be shipped to the customer. So now let's take a look at the actual BPM designer screen that is behind the scenes of the example that we have just seen. Firstly, you can see that it is very graphical and easy to understand. So I'm not looking at code here. I can actually see a visual representation of what the BPM has been set up to do. So we start here, and this is where the BPM checks the discount percentage that has been entered. If certain conditions are met, then we start to move through the process flow. Now this is where the BPM may branch off and carry out different actions depending on other conditions within the transaction that is being processed. So here it checks the value of the order and then routes the approval accordingly. So any orders under £500 will go to Scott, over £500 but under £5,000 will go to Penny and anything above £5,000 will be routed to Brian. The important thing to note here is that to create this BPM no coding has been required. It's been created by choosing options from drop-down lists and then entering values from within these options. Over on the left-hand side, I have my toolbox where I'm able to see a list of my workflow options. From here, I can simply drag and drop into my BPM designer screen. In this example, I can add a further condition to get the BPM to firstly check to see if the data entry user belongs to or doesn't belong to the office manager's security group. If the user doesn't belong to the group of office managers, then the approval routing continues. So, as you have seen in this brief overview, Epicor's BPM will allow you to closely tailor your Epicor solution to reflect the best practices